all of our witnesses. Ms. Phillips, thank you for testifying today and for the important work you did on behalf of Illinois workers. One of the things we fought to do in the American Rescue Plan was invest in equity and specifically in race equity in the unemployment program. What are some of the long-term benefits for children and communities when workers who are historically left out are able to access their earned benefits? Thank you, Ranking Member Davis, for that question. Um, I have four points to, to answer that question. One, financial st stability is incredibly important. Losing a job is stressful. It has devastating consequences. 64% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck right now. If you cannot find a job immediately um, or get UI benefits that you, assuming you may be eligible, um, families may not be able to pay bills, rent, and other expenses. My written testimony offers citations on numerous research studies that show how financial state stability is a gateway for better child outcomes, emotional and educational success for both parents and children, and reattachment to the labor market. Financial instability can be a disrupting force, like having to move to a different school district because you don't have enough money to pay rent. And parents' research is, is very clear on parents' unemployment that can also have long-term effects on children's lifelong earnings. The third point is that there's well-documented and well-researched um, evidence that shows the mental health and the stress impacts that unemployed people face. I cite research in the testimony about that hardship, about anxiety and depression that unemployed workers face that also affects children. And finally, the fourth point is that local economies um, lo when they, they lose when eligible workers can't get UI, when people have less income and those dollars are not cir circulating into those local economies. Um, the research also is very clear, and there's numerous studies cited in my testimony about how unemployment has extreme disparities for people of color, um, namely African-American and Hispanic families. Thank you. Can you tell us more about why ensuring equitable access makes unemployment insurance more effective as a tool for preventing recession or making economic downturns shorter and less bad? I also cite uh, research in my testimony that shows the return on investment for the unemployment insurance uh, program is one point two dollars to every dollar spent. Um, there is uh, evidence in my testimony that cites a Harvard research project that shows the importance of UI as an economic stabilizer, demonstrating that uh, states that have more generous um, unemployment insurance benefits actually significantly um, lessen uh, the volatility of local economic fluctuations. Um, Having workers have financial stability is good for local economies. And the lack of UI access that happens during financial economic uh, downturns when people cannot access UI and cannot get reemployed right away sets communities of color back economically. Ms. Phillips, can you tell us more about what data we collect currently? to measure fairness in the UI system and what additional data we might need to hold states fully accountable? Thank you for that question. Currently, I'll cite two examples of where um, there is data collected that has really robust demographic information. Right now, the USDOL requires states to uh, report on recipiency rates. That has um, strong demographic information. But I will say that any, any new reform that can allow for greater disagre disaggregation of data will help states, will help Congress hold states accountable. One example that I cite in my testimony is 
the ETA 227 report, that is the overpayment report that states report on to USDOL quarterly. Within that report, um, there is uh, a section on non-fraud improper payments. Uh, in my testimony, I cite that just in last, in 2023 in Illinois, the percentage of non-fraud improper payments was actually higher than the fraud pay improper payments. And we have no dem demographic disag disaggregated data to show like what is happening with those non-fraud improper payments. They are this, they are, they can be claimant error, state agency error, employer error, but we don't know anything about anything deeper than that. And then finally, I'd just like to say like in terms of recommendations for what states could collect in the future, um, Illinois is using its equity grant to look at likelihood to file. One of the equitable access to UI issues is not just what happens when someone actually has applied and is on the journey to reemployment, but we, don't, we know virtually nothing about people who don't make it to the front door who are potentially eligible. One of the things that Illinois is doing with the equity, the ARPA equity grant is looking at when employers uh, file a warn notice and figuring out if we can find out why people choose to apply or not apply to UI. And finally, states could be collecting customer experience data. They could be collecting survey information like we did in Illinois that asks claimants about their levels of trust, satisfaction, timeliness, and ease with uh, the application process. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Chairman, for your indulgence, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Davis. We'll now recognize Mr. Carey of Ohio.